Hello everyone. I'm going to be talking on how we can use the contrast enhanced ultrasound, particularly in the liver. So let me introduce to you the concept of contrast ultrasound agents. They are basically micro bubbles which diffuse through the microvasculature and as a result of which we are able to see lesions whether in the liver or anywhere else in any of the organs much better. So the difference between CT and MR contrast agents and the ultrasound contrast agents is that the uh, contrast agents in ultrasound are confined to the intravascular space whereas in CT and MR they pull into the extravascular space. But the advantage of contrast ultrasound is that we are able to analyze these structures in real time so the entire study can be done in real time and we can demonstrate these lesions much better. The advantages of contrast ultrasound are basically like I said one it's real time we have a very good temporal resolution there's no need to predefine the scan times like we need to in CT and MR so we can see it real time all through the study and the biggest advantage is the absence of nephrotoxicity so all the patients with renal failure where we cannot do a CT or MR contrast study we can very well go ahead and do a contrast ultrasound because these agents are excreted by the lungs so since they are micro bubbles they are excreted through the lungs into the air and there is no nephrotoxicity or hepatotoxicity at all so like I said the they are not nephrotoxic they are not hepatotoxic and the incidence of hypersensitivity is also lower than the what is seen with the current x-ray contrast agents and in large studies which have been done up till now consisting of more than 23,000 patients no death has been reported nonetheless we have to be very well equipped whenever we are doing any kind of contrast study and we always have to be prepared with all the drugs or any other research citation material which is required so coming back to what the contrast agents are, they are essentially gas bubbles which is the essence of the contrast agents and this is covered by a stabilizing membrane which can be made with either the phospholipids or albumin or polymer or anything else. So how do they work? When we inject the contrast agents, they diffuse into the microvasculature and they oscillate and as a result of this they generate the harmonic signals and we have to use contrast specific modes on ultrasound to pick up these harmonic signals so we pick up these non-linear responses which come from the ultrasound contrast agent and we can visualize these contrast agents within the microvasculature how do we prepare the contrast agent when we get the contrast agent we get this in a vial which is, and the agent is in a powdery form and it is supplied with this plunger which contains saline so we instill the saline into the uh, powder and we reconstitute the contrast agent and this is done by shaking and mixing the powder then we have to load the required amount of contrast into the syringe and we inject it into the patient using a 20 gauge or a larger board needle and this is followed by a 5 to 10 cc of saline flush. So it is important that we do not use a smaller needle because there's a chance that the micro bubbles may rupture outside. And for studies involving the liver, we typically use a dose of around 1.8 to 2.4 cc of the contrast. And like I said, followed by a 5 to 10 cc of saline flush. What is readily available in India is Sonohue and this is what we use for most of our applications. So similar to CT and MR, we need to study the contrast study in various phases. So we have the, uh, them divided into the arterial portal and late phases similar to the CT and MR study. So there are two types of analysis that we can do. So one is the subjective analysis where we are just visualizing the type of enhancement and the degree of enhancement which is happening in a lesion and the second is the objective analysis so like i said in the subjective analysis we see whether the lesion is hyper enhancing or is it iso enhancing hypo enhancing or non enhancing at all and when it comes to the objective analysis what we need to do is plot these time intensity curves 
This is done by keeping two boxes, what are called called as region of interest. One is kept within the target lesion, and the other one is kept within the normal tissue. And we analyze the enhancement patterns by means of these graphs in both these areas. So one in the target area, one in the normal tissue, and we can see how the target area is differing. Now, when it comes to liver contrast studies, it is very difficult to obtain these graphs because the patient needs to be steady and it's almost impossible for the patient to stop breathing for close to three minutes. So most of the times in our contrast studies in the liver, we always do a subjective analysis. Luckily for us, there are very well established guidelines on how we can characterize the lesions that we are seeing on in the liver on contrast studies. So I would request everyone to go over these guidelines. These are readily available on the internet. And I am going to just uh, show you a couple of benign and malignant lesions. Now, when we are doing the contrast study in the liver, what we are trying to basically do is differentiate the benign and the malignant lesions and then obviously try and categorize them further.